Hello, my name is Aaron Cavanagh and I'm the founder and editor-in-chief of PostBurnout.com. PostBurnout.com is a culture website dedicated to venerating burnt-out artists the world over. This is our website's podcast where we publish full-length recordings of our interviews, which are sometimes the unedited versions of our site's articles and at other times our exclusives. If you're a returning listener, thank you for coming back, and if this is your first time listening, thank you for checking us out. We hope you enjoy and consider subscribing, giving the episodes a thumbs up if you're on YouTube, or giving it a rating if you're anywhere else. It really helps us out. Thank you. Alright, sometimes it can be tricky to make editorial decisions of which interviews to release as exclusive podcast episodes, which should be articles only, and which should get both. But in this case, there was no difficulty whatsoever. Whenever the hip-hop, pop-punk fusion project Sauce Gang Collective come on, it's always chaos and I love it. I decided that no, I'm not going to try and edit this down, and that I was just going to let people hear this interview for the mayhem that it was. Returning to the show for the first time since February, members Kev Kennedy, Reese Davies, Len and Mitchell and Mark Maloney join us to talk about their latest album Mustard Melodies which was released in July. We discuss the making of the album, its delay from its expected springtime release in July, its reception, Kevin's spoken word performance at Electric Picnic, the album's many in-jokes and much more. Hope you enjoy. Ready? <laughs> All right, How's it going? Going, man? How are we? How's it going? Oh, how... <laughs> can I get it so that I can see everyone? How do I do that? Fucking turning into such a boomer. I hate my life. <laughs> Press leave. Press leave. <laughs> <laughs> what does leave do? Uh, hey, you can pin people. Just pin everyone. Oh, you can only just pin one person. You're fucked, man. Fuck. <laughs> just pin Aaron. Yeah, I guess I'll just pin Aaron. How do I pin Aaron? <laughs> Let's crack the kids. How's it going? I love in the background being blocked, Kev. Yeah, obviously hiding something. Yeah, yeah, man. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I actually can't fucking figure this out. What the fuck? Oh, big screen. Yeah, the person who's uh, camera you want to put on go to the top right. Well, the oh, I figured it out. I figured it out. You (laughs) fucking yeah. Oh, he's being an actual boomer. Happens to us all. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably on fucking Discord or something. He's like, lads, where are you? No, just thought we were meeting at the store. The store. <laughs> How are you, Aaron? I'm a good man. How have you been doing? Uh, I'm all right. Could be better. <laughs> yeah, fair. <laughs> I'm, I'm not hung over this time, I swear. You... <laughs> No, I wasn't gonna say. It was, it was funny. I was looking back on the last time we talked. It's like, when was that? Like, just felt like the other day, and it's fucking February. Like, live many, yeah, it's mad. Live, yeah, <laughs> live many lifetimes since then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's up? What's I'm up? On now. Oh yeah, <laughs> solid. Sorry, don't know what happened there. Yeah. All right, see you in a bit. <laughs> they're all they're all laughing at you. Come on, Marty Moore. <laughs> uh, up before me. you get a reaction. <laughs> what are you doing? Get out. You want your laptop? And your phone charger? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Fucking hell. Don't move me out. Your car as well, why don't you? <laughs> get out. Go on, get. What? And the switch as well. Yeah, Fucking hell. Oh, my God. Can't believe he talks to his man like that. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake. Uh, you better have that dinner on. <laughs> Where's my Mickey Mouse blanket, you know? <laughs> I asked for spaghetti. Oops, these are spaghetti alphabets. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at the O's. <laughs> you left the vowels in. I told you, take the vowels out. <laughs> Including Y. How's EP, Kev? Unreal, man. We were in a car for seven fucking hours today. It took two and a, it took two and a half hours to get out of the car park. And Is that from all the traffic, like, like yeah, yeah, yeah? It was nuts. And That's some absolute, some absolute wet brain was parked like at the gate, so they had to bring in a tow truck. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, no, it went great. It was whopper. Yeah, how was your set? 
was good. I did a 15 minute and like instead of doing like the in between parts during the poems, I made it like one piece. That's so I got four of them and I like linked them all together just for a sentence or two. It was fucking deadly. Uh, fucking, That's cool, yeah. uh, Emma Kerwin was like literally front and center for my uh, for my performance. Right. He's like, he did like, um, you know, Dublin Old School and yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So he was he was right in front. It was a bit fucking mad, and he was there like nodding along and bopping along to what I was saying. I was like, "Oh my god, I, I am slightly aroused and about to pass out." It was crazy. And then Emma El Brian did his set. He was unreal. And then the poet Jeff went up and he killed it. But um, fucking Seema, I saw Seema uh, at the Electric Arena, and she fucking blew me away. I'd never even listened to any of her music. And I watched her live, and she's like, it's like a Bonnie Tyler drank points of Guinness. She's just fucking dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great uh, review. <laughs> yeah. Have you listened to her? Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah, I was working I was working at some festival last year, and she was like the opener, and like everyone was coming. Out. I think it was Florence and Machine at, at Malahide. Yes, that, that, that'd be That's right, yeah. Cool. Yeah, and everyone was just coming over and like buying her stuff, because I, I didn't she's get so it. like. Her energy is just nuts. Her energy on stage is mad. Yeah. I wanted, I wanted to check her out. I've never got the the opportunity, I guess, because, you know, when you're working, you can't actually, like, really, like, watch yeah, the so. show. Yeah, so. <laughs> oh, I was trying to get paralytic all weekend, but they put me on on a fucking Sunday, so I had to wait until <laughs> I finished my set on Sunday. Then I started drinking petrol after. It was great. <laughs> Yeah, the good thing is, uh, yeah, down in Shrabelle, you have that, uh, is a super, what's a super coin or what's a super value? And, uh, yeah. you just get, yeah, just get a little it's hard. It's hard. I was, I was asking someone once when I was down there, uh, someone worked in one of the pubs nearby, I was like, do you get much like traffic for, like when, um, um, uh, electric picking signs? Like, you would the first thing, that's it. I was like, all right, yeah, it's like everyone's just in the, so in the yeah, in fact, yeah. Marcus Flower here. Hey, oh. yeah, Sorry, my internet. Da, 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 da. Dreadful. <laughs> hey, Vin, man. All good, man. How are you, Aaron? Grand, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was just saying, actually. Um, I think uh, before you uh, showed up, Mark, and uh, I think Kev, you were actually you were off for a second, but I was saying, like, uh, I was looking back on our, our like last one we talked, and I was like, Jesus, man, it was in fucking February. Like, have, like it, it feels like you know, just like the other day. It's fucking yeah. years yeah. flying. Yeah. This year is yeah. gone by like nothing. <laughs> I hate it. I'm yeah. getting older. <laughs> I know. It's like just I don't know. Looking, um, I gotta ask. Like, I mean, that time, like, you know, between um then and now, I mean, like, you know, obviously you've released like a new single and a, um a full album, obviously second your second album. Yeah, I was just wondering, like, uh, uh, you know, what how's that last few months been for you? Those uh six months or whatever. Stressful. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, I, I uh, we summed it up very well there. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was always really tricky trying to get all six of us in like the pirate to record at the same time, so we had to try and like do it was it all different over the place. bits, like because yeah. I think we originally recorded uh or recorded um. Sam's drums force, but that was yeah. before Christmas or something like that. <laughs> but yeah. uh that's because he was so busy with his thesis or something. Um so then it was kind of like we actually had the drums for every song recorded before Christmas, but then never actually recorded the rest of the songs until later on in the year, like <laughs> another three months later or something. <laughs> So actually, when we would have spoke back in February, the, the album wasn't finished yet, was it? Uh, no. Um, <laughs> we were talking I shite. Think... <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I was rereading that and you were yeah, using planning but, uh... <laughs> to get out around, I think, April, May, you were looking at at the time. But, you know, but that's yeah. not yeah, bad. Yeah, that's... <laughs> we were kinda, yeah. <laughs> we lied. But um, <laughs> no, I think we, we had a good idea of like the structure of the album, I suppose. But um, obviously, between trying to get us all together and stuff we kind of had to move everything around um which was annoying but i think yeah. when did we release it was it june <laughs> i don't know <laughs> yeah well, i can't July. remember yeah July. July. <laughs> oh, oh, you're right. <laughs> oh my god but the um... day the orange ranch. <laughs> oh yeah 13 didn't it yeah the day after one of the other <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah no it uh, it was planned out. We had a we had the idea there, but we just couldn't actually execute it because we're terrible yeah. people. 
<laughs> mm-hmm. Actually, I gotta ask, like, when, when you guys kind of have the drum tracks down, and um, does that kind of like, uh, like cement what you have to do then, or can you still like alter things as you're recording the rest of the record? Um, we definitely added a few things, but um, for the most part, it would have just been like we had demo recordings of all of the songs that we would have done very roughly, but like mm-hmm. the those. Uh, Pretty much every recording is so those drums were then like we didn't record any more drums afterwards so like yeah like you can depending on the sound you know you'd either just change what you need once you record the proper stuff like if, when in a rough recording it might sound a bit different but no i think we we stuck to most of what we we're intending to do is just like a few things i'd say that we changed that probably had to be changed as well yeah Sam was very good, though. We actually yeah, changed very little, little Sam. <laughs> if anything, Sam song. actually made up a lot of the songs on the day of recording. Like he would have. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. There, like... Yeah, he was pretty busy, and I remember. Um, I think we showed him. Uh, I remember. I think it was Queen of Hearts, and I had to mind the drums for him to be like, <laughs> "Oh, it's this kind of feeling," and uh, I was like, after one take. I asked him if that was putting them off, but he was saying, no, that's really, really helpful. <laughs> but he was literally just kind of listening to the song and playing it as he heard it, like, you know, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'd say especially like his influence on like this album, because we on Bangers and Brown Sauce, Sam only like came in to contribute like the live elements to it, but putting like the li- his live drums, especially like in this album, I think, it differentiates the first album, this album, I think, so much. So and much, yeah. So much yeah. Better, like, it's unbelievable, like, just the change. And actually putting that live sound into the album, I think, yeah, that's probably the biggest thing. When we were recording it as well, I think a lot of that, we wanted to show that big time. Yeah. Um, actually, I got I got to ask, like, so for Mark, for yourself, like, uh, uh, as a bass player, like, you know, trying to do... Uh, trying to do a rhythm section, I mean, did you did you find that your um, playing style was kind of uh, restricted by that, by having the tracks down, or did you find that you could uh, still adapt and still mess around? Heavy emphasis on trying. <laughs> <laughs> He's still trying. <laughs> He's still trying. He's still trying. <laughs> I'm trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> I, like to add that there. I like to add that there. But um, I think, yeah, I, I found it, I, I suppose, easier definitely like hearing kind of Sam's drums that because obviously us as a rhythm section when we're playing we'd um always be kind of concentrating on what each other is doing so actually hearing that and then putting my own element on it was a lot easier because again with the first album it was more of a case of Lenny and Reese have made a thing and it's kind of on the day you had to basically do what you needed but now that we actually had a bit of time to really kind of work on the songs a lot more I was able to kind of find my foot and adapt in that kind of sense and it's like first time me playing bass basically on like a Sauce Gang album it was pretty cool for me as a <laughs> yeah. Yeah. they let me do You're... something it was great yeah. <laughs> biggest mistake of our lives <laughs> I have to ask, like you mentioned there, like how it differs from uh, uh, Bangers and Brown Sauce. I was wondering from like all your perspectives, I mean, like when we were talking like last time, you were also mentioned that like, you know, this is really going to be the more definitive kind of uh, Sauce Gang album compared to that. Um, you guys were still kind of getting your foot in with that first record. And, uh, you know, between that album and this album, like you guys have played a lot, you got very familiar with each other and, um, you know, kind of are familiar, uh, like as a band or more seasoned, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, yeah. How do you find that this record kind of differs from the first one? You go first, Ken. Bleeding <laughs> deadly. No, um, <laughs> I'd say uh, like the main difference is obviously it's, it's capturing the fucking live sound, you know, and we really, really did that. And also, it's like, it's, I felt like when we were first doing it, it wasn't a band, it was a collaborative project and it was always, oh, I'll add a little bit here and I'll add a little bit there. Whereas it was ideas coming directly from within the band and worked on within the band, like each song either started between one of the members or between two of the members. And then it was that whole thing. It was like, okay, now we'll decorate the rest of it. You know what I mean? 
And um, I think that process is just shows because we've been writing songs anyway. It just came down to getting them recorded. And then it was a similar process then. A few lads doing the heavy work and then the rest of us come in and decorate, you know what I mean? So um, that, that, that's one of the idea. I'm not taking away from anybody there. But just having that foundation there, like like I'd say, Lenny Reese and Mark really build that foundation of like when it comes to what kind of vibe we're going for the song. And then Chefs will give it that backbone. And then me and Neil add the frills and everything else, you know, with lyrics. Um, I think it was a lot more fun. Like the actual process of writing the songs, oh, the yeah. process of record, uh, the process of recording it was just so so much crack. And then the mixing process for release was shite. I'm sure, but we didn't have to do it, so I don't really care. It's <laughs> like easier than last time, anyway. <laughs> um, no, but it was, it, it, it was like being on a fucking school trip with your mates making this album. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like just, just, just lads, like one person's away, so it's like, all right, we'll be there. We'll take the piss, you know. <laughs> Um, and that was a there was just a really very fun kind of uh, experience. Whereas Lenny and Reese put the album together, the first album, Bangers and Brown Sauce, and I'm just like, oh, here's a link to this album that I made that has a track which you want to keep. I was like, oh, sound nice one. Do you know? What I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. it's, uh, it's just very different, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah definitely, it's, it's definitely been way more fun, you know. Like, um, like you're saying, kind of em- emulating that like live sound that we had because we we're able to play live for so long. We we're also to figure out, okay, with these new songs, we know what we like to do on stage, and we're gonna try and do a lot more of that in the recordings, you know, like. So like for for me example example like I love shouting as loud as I can. <laughs> so I did I did a few, yeah. bit, a few bit more of that and like I, I remember recording the first album and there was like I I had no idea how to record vocals at all like I was just kind of more saying saying how I should sound instead of actually just like doing it you know mm-hmm. being that sound instead of like, mm-hmm. like trying to like fake the sound almost you know what I mean but um. Yeah, I've definitely felt an improvement on for everyone, like how how we play and our intentions with songs. Like there's a way more like the yeah. first album was spur of the moment. Like every song was just like, oh, like this is just happening now. But we were yeah. like, I remember like ages ago, even when we were planning the second album, we were like, oh, mm. we want like this kind of song and that kind of song and this kind of song oh, 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 oh. to do this and do that. So we had mm. a lot of stuff planned out before we even kicked it off. You know, there's a lot more intention in this album. I think one of the biggest uh one of the biggest things that you'll notice difference wise as well, especially if you just look at each person within the band, the standard of Lenny's writing and the standard of Lenny's performance vocally has like went up so much since the last album. That's not a diss on about, you know, that, 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 that that's not a diss on how shit he was on the first album, by the way. <laughs> it's just like he was he was he was very, very good on this one. He kinda he stepped up a lot. Um vocally, rhythm wise, lyrically, everything, you know. And uh, it's good to see, you know, and I think that comes down to just being around other semi-creative people. It's like healthy competition, you know, you're trying to just... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, oh, trying to show each other up, like, you know? I, I, I remember yeah, look what uh, I remember. when we were writing Mad Cunts and we were sending our bars to each other and uh, Lenny sent me his and I heard him performing his, I heard the demo. And I didn't say it to Lenny at the time, but I went to Flower and I went to the was like, fuck, I'm going to rewrite my bars now. <laughs> <laughs> I rewrote my bars for that four times. That was my, they were my final version. I completely yeah. changed it every time. I was like, no, nah, that's shite, that's shite. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, stuff. Whereas but, like, how, we, how we'd usually do lyric writing is like, we'd sit down for 10 minutes and uh, be like, one thing, one take. Oh yeah, that's deadly. Let's go yeah. with that. And then yeah. that's it. Yeah. One thing I actually want to ask you, Kev, is because uh, you do, if I'm correct, you do like um, uh, uh, poetry outside of, uh, of this band. So I was wondering, like, do you find that um, that kind of competitive uh, sort of writing thing that you're sort of talking about, the lyrics there, do you find that that kind of uh, impacts the way you think about um, the work you do outside this project too? So I would actually say kind of the contrary. Like I, I see Sauce Gang and my uh, spoken word and the poetry as like two completely different animals like poetry on my side is very serious whereas Toss Gang is therapeutic in a different way because I can get a laugh out of it it's very sociable I get to flex a writing muscle and stuff where I don't have to have this much meaning behind these lyrics I can just showcase wordplay I can showcase um, uh, like other sides of my writing 
and that competitive that's that's simply like a sibling rivalry competitiveness that I was talking about there with with Lenny. But yeah. like I think I think the difference is on the poetry scene, it's very different from the music scene. Is um it's a very supportive kind of network, do you know what I mean? And like I feel like the music scene, especially there, there's a lot of hierarchy, there's a lot of uh, competition that's just ingrained within music and everyone, all bands are guilty. I was like, oh, they're doing this, we're doing that. Mm-hmm. It's not like that with the kind of spoken word. So there's just kind of two sides to the both of them. They're very different. But uh, the ball was beneficial in different ways, I find. Yeah. Yeah, there's like a free catharsis to this that uh, you just kind of uh, can't get. Yeah. Like, do you find like, you know, because obviously, um, you know, when you're playing music live, I mean, uh, sometimes like the through the PA system or whatever, so, like the actual lyrics can get kind of uh, jumbled or even just in the mix uh, with the instrumentation and stuff like that. Whereas obviously with spoken word, I mean, um, there's just like, you know, obviously just to focus on what's being said. Do you find that that also kind of liberates it too, where people aren't kind of hanging on every word I don't know yes, that's that kind of different just in terms of the crowd reception to it's fucking terrifying um, I'm a natural performer I've always been a performer and I love being on stage because there's 600 million things that they can be focusing on other than me and when you're doing uh, the other side of things you're doing spoken word you're just hearing your breath against the microphone and mm-hmm. it's uh, yeah. it's a bit mad you know but, uh, yeah no it is uh, it, it is it's, it's two very different animals but uh, they're both they're both playing in separate ways you know um, yeah. And then for everyone else, I was wondering, like, uh, you know, for the other projects you guys are involved with, um, how do you find that uh, kind of Sauce Gang has been influencing them or have they been influencing them? Do you find that uh, Sauce Gang is very much just its own kind of like separate thing that's uh, um, that ha- like six within a certain boundary or what's your kind of feeling on that? I think Sauce Gang as like its own entity is so different even from what stuff I've heard uh, anywhere really so i think it'd be mm-hmm. quite hard to kind of replicate that when it's in like a different project and different things like that and it just so to the testament of like how great like sauce gang is and like what we can do together because i think again with all when uh, six of us together i don't think bringing anyone in like again it'd be a very hard job to do for like anybody to try replicate the sound and like the chemistry especially that we have together Fact. So, yeah i think that is probably the biggest thing like the chemistry and how we sound again yeah like it is quite singular in comparison to again a lot of the bands that are out there and we take pride in that as well yeah 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 i i always try and describe it as like a tug of war between all of us because we all like different music and i think we might try and write music in a way that how we usually write music but then say you know mark or kev or lenny neil or sam might go well actually i think you should do this because they probably like that sort of sound and then you know it's kind of like well then someone else will go well actually i think this and it kind of it's just that constant tug of war between all of us kind of almost fighting for our own sound yeah make those gang what it is um and it really kind of, I suppose for lack of a better term, it sounds kind of chaotic, but it is chaotic. Yeah. But that's what <laughs> Sauce Gang chaotic. is, you know, uh, it, it, it's chaos. It. It's chaos incarnate, <laughs> like, you know? Yeah, fact. Uh, what are you uh, also, sorry, go. No, that's it. <laughs> No, I want to talk about kind of the humor on, on, on the album too, because you guys were talking about like, uh, you know, kind of like uh, <laughs> having a similar sense of humor. But it's just oh, wondering, God. like, uh, no, but no, well, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ask <laughs> <laughs> No, I was uh, gonna ask. That's you. it. We're done, boys. We're done. <laughs> we're going to mute release for this section. <laughs> no, but like, do you have um? Because like, I remember when I was like um. Uh, like any creative thing people do, they always say to like uh, avoid in jokes. That was the advice I always got. Where I, I do kind of get with this record, the, some of the stuff kind of feels kind of like uh, in joke. You feels like uh, something somebody might have said at some point during the production or during the writing that kind of gets incorporated into the record. I was wondering, like, uh, you know, how much of it is sort of um, uh, taught out and much of it is spontaneous. What kind of um, stuff no, would you? What, 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 what example? Would you? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't make him repeat it. Don't make him repeat it. <laughs> um, okay, no, cats out of the bag, guys. We have to. Yeah. Tell we have to tell I him now. Cats out of the bag. In fairness, I think a lot of the jokes that are in it is more so they 
kind of happened while we were recording it and we go that would be really funny if that was on the uh track or something and we just kind of go well fuck it let's put it on it like you know yeah. um because i think part of the charm of us at least performing live is that we're always having fun with each other and i think a lot of people kind of might watch us on stage performing and look at us and go wow they're really having fun as a friend group and i think that's mm-hmm. entertaining to watch so i think that was another part probably of our live performances that we wanted to incorporate sure. because like there will be time the album sorry. you know now go there, will be, there will be times like on stage where we literally walk on stage and be like what's the story where's your fucking goodie and people just like what are you talking about <laughs> um, it's just one of those things you know uh, we'll release on the third album we're going to more depth about it um, <laughs> no but like in jo- the in jokes, ninety five percent of practices are made up of in jokes, and five yeah. percent of them we'd be on top of the world right now if we stopped taking the piss. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah that's that, that, that's never going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I really like for what it's worth. Like I really did get that kind of sense of like, uh, you know, kind of just like these ideas like that are just kind of like coming true. That's how I kind of read it. Um, yeah, and it's like, uh, it's it's kind of cool because like you know, it doesn't feel like. Uh, like exclusionary you know the way sometimes you hear like a joke and you're like oh shit like i i wish i knew what they were joking about but it doesn't really feel like that it doesn't feel like i'm being left in the dark around it's kind of yeah uh, it's kind of like you're you're in on, it's like the listener from the listener kind of perspective it feels like you're kind of in on the joke in a weird way you know i don't know if that's what you guys thought about like when you're making it or i think it was the, it was honestly it was the spontaneity of it and yeah i think yeah <laughs> Yeah, I think I think you can feel I think the we humor can. because like yeah. we're all mates, we're all just slagging each other. Yeah, yeah. Stuff, right? yeah. So if yeah. you have people like that in your life, like you're gonna understand where we're coming from, you know. And even like towards the the end of like where's your budgie, the whole war of the buttons reference again. Me yeah. and Len, when we were younger, we used to watch that film <laughs> all the time, all, all the time. Yeah. So, I love that film, yeah. Dad, Fergus. Yeah. So <laughs> good your mouth. mouth. <laughs> I, I I honestly can't tell you how that came about. Like the yeah. <laughs> where's your Vulgy Fergus? I don't know where it came about, but as soon as we did it, we were like, "There's no going back now. We're keeping that." On no. the- yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've literally done. we've literally spent an hour laughing about a curtain. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I like the, this kind it, of stuff that 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 the recording process does to your brain. Um, yeah i think spending yeah. like what six seven hours in the same room with like six small lads room. and you're getting yeah small, small room six <laughs> lads not, not everybody can sit down um, i think you do start yeah you, you you i think we all started going a bit stir crazy and started finding uh, really stupid things very funny but we were like oh that's funny let's let's put it in the recording and it probably <laughs> isn't funny but because we find it funny people find it funny yeah it's kind of like people are probably laughing at us for how stupid we are we'll you know we'll <laughs> oh we're happy as long as you're laughing you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah literally you know as long as somebody's yeah. laughing we're like yeah it works it works yeah, I was thinking you were talking about that kind of cabin fever sort of effect there. I'm thinking, you know, the way like uh, like Johnny Cash and stuff used to record albums in prisons. You should do like an album from solitary confinement. Yeah. See what that comes <laughs> out like. Oh, that is an idea. <laughs> yeah. Like that. yeah, someone's dying, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just uh, chuck you into a room uh, for like seven weeks with just like a notepad and take notes and shit like that and then just see what oh, comes geez, out. There was that writing <laughs> album from there. Oh my God. Yeah, that would be really fucking scary. Imagine if he's all did that. And he's all, <laughs> maybe had, all had the exact same notes and ideas and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, also, I want to talk uh, uh, recently a bit about um, the production of the album because, you know, you're di- you're juggling like a lot of different kind of uh, music songs, uh, primarily kind of hip-hop, yeah. um, pop-punk um, as well. But like, you know, uh, there's also like kind of more kind of uh atmospheric kind of experimental music too um mm. there's even uh you know this there, it, it's it's a lot more experimental i think than yeah the previous yeah. record um but i think it has a nice consistency to it all um like in terms of like the actual structure of um song track by track i think there's a there's kind of a bit of a break between uh you know hip hop pop punk experimental yeah you know, it's kind of it's kind of balanced right was that um, i was wondering yeah from the production standpoint i mean uh how did you find balancing all that a real pain in the hole i uh, <laughs> i 
by like I think it was a week before the album released. I think the lads actually started listening to the album, and I'm like, okay, okay great, thanks for the feedback. But um, yeah, no. By the end of like the production kind of side of things, I could not stand listening to the songs, and um, they just became noise to me. Mm-hmm. But um, it's 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 tricky, um, trying to balance everything. But I think. Because they're all so different, I kind of just focus on getting the fundamentals right, which were just, you know, there's drums in a lot of songs, there's a bass. So I'm like, okay, get those right, and then maybe work on the vocals, and then the rest, hopefully it'll work out. Um, I think it did. It was okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it, it was pretty tricky. Um, but I think just through trial and error, just kind of going back and listening, you know, making a bounce of a mix listening to it for a couple of days, driving myself crazy and uh, making notes on my phone going, you know, uh, it's, you know, a bit too much of 200 Hertz here or something like that, you know? And um, yeah, no, I don't think there was any song in the album where I probably made one pass of the mix and was like, Oh, I'm happy with that. It was constantly Stone, like, um, no, I think Stone and Shoe actually had one or two mm. mixes. <laughs> I was sure. um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I, every song was driving me nuts. But by the end yeah. of it, I was I was still kind of I was happy with it, you know. Well, I'd say but that's like, the thing. It's like I think with mixing, you're never going to get a perfect mix or anything. You just kind of have to pull the plug and just go. This is the best I'm going to do in this moment in time. Mm. Um, but I think but it's probably the best it could sound. Mark, shut up! I'm talking, but you can go now. <laughs> <laughs> Please, Yo, can, can I finish? I- okay, I finished. <laughs> I was gonna add that I think the the way we actually had the songs structured out in terms of like the track list that is something we did debate over like between yeah. seeing it, like how it can seamlessly flow kind of one song into the next because as you were saying it is quite chaotic like the different stars that are going around so I think it may be some of them songs track list wise were like mixed around I think it could be a very different listen yeah Fast. yeah we, yeah we spent like one or two weeks just almost arguing about you know which song should come next after each one um but i think that's what helps the album flow a little bit Does better that, i think if yeah, you're the, jumping around songs it, you can probably notice the imperfections a bit more <laughs> like the start and finish was kind of set in stone we knew we were opening with what's the sauce and we knew we were finishing with disaster song and i think yeah somewhere along the way it was trying to figure out okay the first three came easily and then kind of like the last two were all right. And then after that, it was finding that whole middle. The middle, it was yeah. Just, it was just crazy trying to figure out what way to. At least that's why we always do that interlude thing. Like the Where's Your Budgie? That was a center song. To like, break like, up the album. Yeah. Like, middle, as like a little break, you know. Facts, facts. Just lyrics and crap and then more lyrics. Just, yeah. Just very simple kind of, I don't know what you, what you even call it. Glass of water, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah man, whatever you were talking about, yeah. Oh, glass of water. <laughs> <laughs> That's Tiki the name bear. of the next interlude if right it, there. Dipping in the hand <laughs> in the glass of water. water. <laughs> <laughs> so I, gotta, I gotta ask, before the, the record came out, um, I, I guess like you, because you guys were saying you were still putting things down even uh during the spring so uh, nintendo 08 came out in uh, on new year's day um yeah i was wondering did that kind of um did the sound of that single kind of influence the way um the album was produced and mixed or did you kind of um did you even go back i actually didn't notice this so maybe maybe didn't but did you um uh, do any additional um editing or any additional mastering for nintendo 08 for the album version or is it the exact same as it was as a single um no it's the exact same um it it, like i think with nintendo away it definitely sort of i suppose gave me a guide on what the album should sound like and which is always useful but it's trying to grab a sound by the balls and try and figure out you know how do i make it sound like another song Um, and i think that's probably what was driving me crazy because there's songs on it that don't sound like nintendo away but they sound kind of close. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, and Nintendo 8, I think, definitely defines the sound of the album. But I think we knew that going in, that, you know, we wanted to be a bit more of a live band anyway. So um, it wasn't the most complicated thing to 
you know, incorporate every song to kind of be grounded from Nintendo 08, yeah. so to speak. And it's so weird, like for me anyway, I don't know if you're the same, but when you're actually listening back to the album, uh, when you hear the ones that we didn't do, like there's only two or three, isn't there, that we didn't actually do live as a band that were done yeah. kind of in studio. And you listen to them and you're kind of like, oh, that was a thing. Like, or, oh, we didn't, like you forget about them, you know, because we spent so much time playing these songs, practicing these songs, recording these songs. And then the ones that I don't purely through uh through uh editing recording and recording and everything it's just it's it's it seems like uh it seems like it got lost a little bit and then you hear like oh like you know it's kind of a surprise each time you hear I don't know if these are the same um maybe I'm just talking bollocks but uh yeah what's new yeah stop <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah, and I guess like uh, one of the final things I'll ask you guys uh, is like now that the album's been out um, for about a month now, I guess. Um, yeah, I mean, what's kind of like the plans now in terms of like pushing it in terms of like live dates, everything like that? Uh... <laughs> it's uh, it's, it's, it's going to be a lot of um, Just... promotion, I suppose. Yeah. Like, you know, like this, we're doing interviews and um, we're going to try and play as live as much as possible. Um, but that's always tricky, and it always was tricky because there's six of us. But um, mm-hmm. so I think whenever we get the chance to up, let us know. Yeah, yes, um, we'll be there. Yeah, like we did the uh, the kind of album launch night uh, in Workman's, um, and that was fun. We got a good tour now, and you know, obviously, then after everybody heard the album live, it was like, oh, now we can go home and actually, you know, experience the album as a as a studio project. Um, you played the album front to back. Yeah, no. there was Almost. one or two. Yeah, Sometimes there was one or two songs. Have yeah, learn how to play live yet. There's, there's yeah, still okay. a bit more to work with them. Some of them mm. were probably borderline impossible to play live. Yeah. <laughs> Some of the more hip hop heavy. We're songs. still trying to get a. We're still trying to get ten live budgies to bring them out on stage. But Workman's yeah. not really okay with that. <laughs> well, only it's the they said it was animal day. cruelty or something like that. I, I, I don't get it. Bureaucracy, man. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, and and I guess the other thing I'll, I'll just ask um, now that has been out. I mean, like, um, have you guys been noticing any kind of like uh, uh, feedback, any kind of like uh, uh, press and your reviews, anything like that? Yeah, there was uh, one article written. Um, I think it was last week or something like that. It was very cute. Um, there was some guy and he was talking about. Um, just Sauce Gang as a whole, he listened to Mustard Melodies. Um, and he was just saying how, you know, what we do is very unique, but in a way that if anyone else was to do it, it might be kind of cringy, which I was right. like, yes, you know, we're yes. getting away with it. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank God, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, I think this guy was like a middle-aged sort of fella and he was like talking about, you know, um, he was more of a rocker. But um, because he listened to Sauce Gang, that he kind of opened his mind a little bit more to hip hop and stuff, which is always really nice. Um, but uh, I can't remember my point I was trying to make. <laughs> no, just as I mean, the kind of reception. Any reviews, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, just in um, general. I mean, is there any kind of like reception that you've got? Oh, of... yeah. I mean, that's um, a good answer. That one was really nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, a lot of people are kind of coming up and, you know, they do kind of agree that, you know, it's a step forward from bangers and brown sauce and we think so too um but uh yeah i don't know <laughs> everyone's happy everyone loves it yeah you know, every, everyone's everybody's happy. everybody's happy everybody loves us um it's nice people, yeah. yeah just a lot of people saying that that big fella who's at the front of the stage is mad sexy but other than that like it's been fairly standard you know yeah, they keep thinking, <laughs> uh, look off the stage man I don't know who they're talking about Huge. Um, yeah, is there any kind of like uh, any kind of bribery we can do for you know if anyone if it sauce gangs your number one listen to for your Spotify rap in December, you get a car or something. Well, not a car, but like give him Reese's kind of, car. Is there any kind of bribery we can do? Take my car, yeah. Yeah, we're gonna so, yeah, we'll take car. <laughs> the thing is, if we do that, Lenny's just gonna win a car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How do you divide a car between six people? We're all we're our own uh, biggest fans. <laughs> yeah, stop. <laughs> 
right, well, listen to Sauce Gang then. Um, yeah, and I guess what I, the final final thing I'll ask you is, uh, uh, you know, uh, like you're you're talking about the kind of leap in quality, uh, you know, as as musicians as songwriters between this album and next. Is there anything from this kind of making this album that you've kind of um, uh any kind of like pitfalls or anything that kind of made you kind of go, oh, well, I, we know we'll have to do that next time or was well, it kind of smooth sailing on this one? Um, I think it was as well, it was the first time we were kind of looking to record as like the live band, which again also like brings its challenges too. And I think, again, the further we do this and concentrating on that sound, I think the better we will be. Like I've no guarantee, like I guarantee, sorry, that I even like the next singles we do, next albums we do it's just gonna be one step better than what we really think we can reach as like a pinnacle for sauce gang mm-hmm. yeah striving to do better for sure yeah. each time yeah. i think that's the that's the only that's the best way we can look at it. like we could see this album we're extremely proud of it but also we, we know in our hearts as well we can probably do even better as well and that's the exciting part about it too yeah. knowing how right. far we could actually go is kind of like riveting for all of us, really. Yeah, it's handy, you know, that that we hate ourselves so much that we'll just be like, "Here, we're gonna make something better than last time." You know what I mean? We're, yeah, <laughs> we're, gonna yeah. we're gonna make something even better. Yeah, self disdain gets the ball moving. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> but that's it. You know, we've been recording the album for so long, we're kind of sick of it. So we're like, okay, we gotta write. Gotta make something new, this, now. you know. <laughs> More <Yeah>. already. <laughs> All right. Well, look I, look for, <laughs> I look forward to whatever you got coming up next, man. Um, yeah, man. Thanks, thanks for taking time out to talk to me again. Uh, I guess the final thing I'll ask, besides obviously, listen to the record, stream the album. Uh, is there anything you guys would like to add? Anything you'd like to plug? Anything? Uh, yeah, if anyone needs, sauce gang. Let me talk. Um, no. <laughs> if anyone needs oh. a support slot in the coming uh, in the coming months or weeks, get on to us. So we're looking to reach out to as many uh, new fans. And new artists as possible. So, yeah, please get on to us. Get on please. to us if you're looking for support acts. Please, awesome. <laughs> well, shout out to everyone who's actually listened to it as well and gave us like brilliant feedback yeah. and all the reviews and stuff. Like yeah, we are really appreciative of all yeah. that. So, oh yeah, yeah. we wouldn't yeah. be here without it. You know, as much as we love ourselves, we love the attention we get. Yeah, we love for sure. Way more. Yeah, 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 <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, just uh, walk on to the judge, and that's that's it. Cheers, <laughs> actually. You're sorry, bad. just to add one question I thought of there. Um, are you guys looking for things like at the moment, uh, things like representation, things like management or or labels, or are you kind of content to do it kind of uh, independently for the moment? Always looking, you know, yeah, refuse, refuse nothing but digs in the head, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so make them an offer. <laughs> yeah. If I could stick a leash on us, I'll be impressed, you know. Yeah. 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 Like in terms of promotion for this album, it was us. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. But again, like as I was discussing before, for us to get like better and better, I think again, ingraining maybe like different people into the fold could work for us as well. So yeah, it's definitely something like we'd consider, you know. Oh, yeah, sure. we, need, yeah. uh, we need an authority figure. Yeah, because we're six you, each as well at the end of the day, you know. But do you have brain between us. like, like losing your autonomy? Because like you know, I think part of what makes Sauce Gang so unique, as you guys are talking about, was like just the kind of you're kind of mentioning the kind of anarchic kind of spirit of just like doing whatever the fuck you want. And if you have someone kind of like <laughs> curtailing that and being like, no, you have to kind of have some structure. You can't do this. You can't do that. You probably like. It would probably drive you mad. Yeah, like <laughs> and if, if it in, we won't bring, <laughs> but we won't bring in <laughs> the thing as well. We won't bring in someone for the sake of it, just because yeah. they're saying, "Oh, they're yeah, they're yeah." Nah, like if they, well, I think, I think as well, they they they'd, they'd have to. Uh, to I think they'd have to understand that. Kill them all. Our, uh, <laughs> they have to understand that our charm is probably that chaos as well. Anyway, so. I think they'd be silly to try and rein us in because that's not who we are, yeah. you know. They're no yeah. bleeding. That 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 fucker not be one. Sorry, go on. What he says. <laughs> like, oh, can't you be more like Coldplay? They're such nice boys, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he gets us playing Croker, we might consider. It. <laughs> yeah, you know, we'll sell <laughs> out. If that's the case, we'll sell out. Yeah, we'll just yeah. play yellow. Yeah. 
Just show yeah, just show the Who's all things. yellow, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> yellow like a budgie. All right. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He gets it. He gets it. <laughs> thanks again for your time. It's been nice to chat with you again. Uh, right, best luck with the man. album and uh, everything else. Cheers, man. Thanks nice so man. much for having us. Absolutely, man. Thanks for joining us, man. Peace out. Best. best luck to you all. Take it easy. Shalom. How do we leave? Okay. Thank you for listening to the episode of PostBurnout.com interviews. We're an independent venture run by yours truly. And as I said at the beginning, liking, rating, subscribing and sharing really helps us out a lot. If you're feeling extra generous, we do have a PayPal donation link in the episode description, but don't feel obligated, of course. We've also begun releasing occasional exclusive episodes on Spotify, so subscribe there if you'd be interested in hearing those. Thanks again for listening and see you next time.